So, hey guys, Chelsea here. So, time to talk a bit about Parking Adventures. It's a bit overdue, but I really wanted to not make any hasty conclusions. I tried playing it my way, I saw what other people did, gathered info, and now I feel ready to talk a bit about the mode long term. And in this video, I'm going to focus on how you should approach Pirate King Adventure. And I'm going to give you two potential strats. But first, let's lay down the basics here. As you see, my defeat level is pretty low, honestly. Once I learned that defeat level capped at level 150, I just started to chill a lot. Because one of the things I was excited with this move was seeing like, how far can you go in a month? That was very cool to try and find out seeing scaling, trying to optimize damage, stuff like that. But then I learned you can't. So I just focused on using my stamina to try and make new teams for you guys. And I posted at least one new team every day. I know a lot of you have asked for Odin wids, but we're going to see that I've literally just hit level 100 Odin. For the first few days, I basically skipped Odin. Because I felt it wasn't worth it, but then I realized people want wids for Odin too. So I will try and see what I can give you. But basically, the thing you have to remember with PKA is that you have to plan how you're going to get all rewards. And we're, just, we're not just talking about the Chopper Man missions. I hate that it leaves for another screen. And as you see, there are some of them that are time gated. So to get everything, you have to complete the mode in uh, the first two weeks basically which is a bit weird to me because they said that this mode was going to be pretty chill do it at your own pace we even have a month to do it but they still put in this bs basically that forces you to do it in two weeks should they should just remove that there's no reason to rush let people do it at their own pace like we can't even Spend as much stamina as we want. Uh, like we both have the PvP stuff and normal stuff. And the normal stuff is about gathering turtles. And basically there are some different approaches to this. We'll get into that soon. And finally one thing I've seen. Because I've seen a lot of people say that. Just take it easy. Stick at like level 60, level 80, whatever. Get your turtles and get out. But we have the feet rewards. They are not to be ignored. They both give tickets that are pretty valuable. And it also adds up to be a lot of bounty. And bounty in the long term is also more gems. So you want to try and get to level 150. But people have discovered like that uh, level 150 Roger has like 1 billion HP. And they feel like maybe I only do like 300,000. It's not even worth trying. But it actually is. And one thing to note here is that you can focus on the shopping missions for the first two weeks, get those done. But after that, you still have two weeks to try and get the defeat reward. And there are ways to cheese it. So let's just jump into a run. I'm not going to complete or anything, but just so I can check all of the bonus stuff and such. And as you see, I'm about to get level 100 Odin. Yay. But yeah, if you look at the bonus stuff... As you see, I mixed ma max mine pretty decently. But there are a few things to consider here. For example, first we have the type bonuses that can add damage. So for example, this season where Roger is a uh, dex type, having a lot of extra strength damage adds up. So that's one thing you can focus on. And then of course we have the actual bonus stuff that the units can do uh, after my conclusion right now with this is that Luffy and Nami are not the best they might be nice like early just to call, gather resources for later so you can maybe use meat with Luffy and tangerines with Nami but maybe not really actively go out and get them but really what you should focus on is that some players should still focus on Zoro and some should focus on Sanji and Usopp. 
First, let's talk about the sore root. It's basically what I've been doing myself without knowing if it's good or not. Basically, if you have mostly the new batch, you know you can do a lot of damage. You're not afraid of level 150. Then you just want to get it done ASAP and get out because it does feel like this mode isn't really worth the farm after you've got all of the Shopping Man and all of the Defeated Watch. Makes me very sad to say that, but <laughs> that feels like the real reality. I'll probably expand on that in a future video. But basically for those people like sorry just means you have to do less runs overall. And the drops increase so much so that by the time you get to level 150, you will be done with the shopping man too. You will have enough turtles. So just go as fast as possible, get as much sake as possible, buff sore as much as possible, and get get in, get out. Like you can even ignore the mini boss, probably it's not the greatest value, I'd say. But then we have the major issue, which is the people without much new batch, who probably doesn't do much dam enough damage. There are some cheese, and you have to think long term here. Like, you can say that, like, today I'm going to defeat Roger one time, and that might be fine. Like, if you are at level 130, let's just say 130. And there's two weeks left to do the shopping map, to do the defeat rewards. Like there is no rush. You don't need to beat it right away. It's better to make sure that you get the resources, you get the good map to pull off the she strats. And basically we have Sanji and Usopp. Sanji at max level gets uh, all types plus 60%. So they do 60% more damage. That's an insane buff. And with Usopp, with his maxed, you can get enemy HP minus 60%. So if you're talking about a boss with over 1 billion HP, suddenly it's fine to maybe do just a bit over 200 million damage. And it's still enough. And I dare say that most experienced people who've been playing long enough will be able to be, build one single team that can do that much damage, which means that you can get the defeat reward. Another thing to consider as, of course, is the type bonuses. So you can also try and get some Luffy if you don't have any Sanji and Usopp, for example. But otherwise, basically all your resources should go into Sanji and Usopp. At least for statues, you only need to do it until you get to level 20. After level 20, if you get Sanji and Usopp to level 20, just go all in on Luffy just to get his level as high as possible to even further increase the damage. But that's how I'd recommend playing if you are struggling and are feeling like giving up. And also I'll say that uh, content creators have been pushing for the wrong way to play. But I want to remind you that we had literally no idea how this mode worked before now. But I'm happy to try and help and give up, give out more proper strats on how to potentially play. But yeah, I hope this video was helpful and I hope all of you can get the max reward for this mode. Let's just see if we can do the strat in this run. Like you have Usopp there right away. So you go to Usopp, you get his max event that cuts the HP by minus 60%. Then you want to get to Sanji. Which we can. So you see there we can pull off this strat here. If you got both Usum and Sanji to level 20 here. You have 9 of each of their items. You trigger their events. Then Roger is literally free at any level. So good luck trying to make that work. If you feel like you don't have enough damage. But yeah. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time.